Today I'm gonna build a giant Lego volcano that actually erupts to see what it'll do to the rest of my Lego city. Hopefully it'll be really cool and not completely ruin all my bricks. So here's the plan. I wanna build a huge Lego volcano, and then I wanna place the remaining buildings from my city around it to see what'll happen to them when it actually explodes. And to make it actually erupt, I have a couple ideas for chemical reactions we could test to see which one'll work the best. But first, we have to build our volcano. So I ordered around 2,000 two by fours, and then some greenery pieces to put on top of the volcano. So I got some base plates laid out. We have nine base plates. What I'm thinking is we just start stacking bricks. I guess let's first make an outline to see how this thing's gonna fit. And we'll use different colors underneath so we don't waste all our brown pieces. Okay, so we have like the basic layout for the volcano and I've never done this before. I just assume if you create like a round shape, we just kind of taper it up and that will make a volcano. And for the area that's actually going to hold the ingredients that are gonna make this erupt, we're gonna put this like right up here and then have some sort of mechanism to dump the ingredients in at the top, which means we need to make this thing super tall. Now I think we just gotta keep building up layers and putting structure underneath. This thing is huge. Basically I'm building it in three sections as you can see, so that we can carry it easier. I kind of want to make a shape like this so it goes up and then slopes. So what I'm doing is I'm stacking like three bricks like this so that we can get that vertical shape like this. And then on the next layer, I'll stack two bricks, but then I'll move them in one. That's basically how I'm doing the rock formation. I'm just going up and then every couple layers, I go in one stud and then I go up a little bit more and I vary it so it's not the same all the way around because we don't want it to look perfect. But I gotta get back to work because we got a lot, <laughs> we got a lot of bricks to stack. As you can see, there's a little issue here where this middle section is actually a little wobbly because these ones are all, you know, stuck together. We just need to put some cross braces here and then I kind of want to do pillars inside this because if this breaks apart, we are totally <laughs> going to be in a world of hurt. All right, so I'm thinking if we grab these plates and we put them on here, I hope that's the right size. There we go. And they should all go on here. We'll just ignore that because frankly, I don't want to fix it. Now we have that up a little bit. We're gonna probably put it up like a little bit more just so we can put the trash can on. I mean, the volcano chamber, but this thing's looking pretty good. We got the Technic bricks in place. You can see it is a lot stronger, a lot sturdier now. So now as you can see, we have three parts. These are a lot stronger and all we need to do is snap together these like this. Check it out. And this is how far we've come with our volcano. We already ran out of orange, so I've moved over to blue. I've transitioned to blue here. What I'm doing is I'm just going in here and I'm adding a back layer that sticks out enough to where the next couple layers will have stability. And what I'm learning to do is actually build up multiple layers and not make everything the same. Like I wanna just add some randomness to it because randomness is what nature is made of. Randomness that God figured out already. <laughs> And this is how it looks. And that is basically what I've been doing along here, this whole thing. I'm also making sure not to cross these over so that they can still come apart. Cause I made that mistake like five minutes in and it was frustrating. Honestly, the outside of these are the fun part. The hard part is actually going back in with two by fours on the inside to make the thing that holds it together because it takes so many more layers. It takes me like 20 minutes per layer. So many colors to make this thing stable on the inside. It's crazy big though. This thing is ginormous. Like look at how giant this thing is. That's crazy. If you guys are running out of Lego pieces or just need a specific part, you can check out this video sponsor, Crazy Kai's Brickling Store, because they have a ton of Lego pieces in stock in different colors and stuff. You can check them out using the first link in the description. They are super awesome. I love them. And they ship fast too, so that's cool. I've taken a Minecraft Steve and stretched him out to make this nice ruler. And so as you can see, we need to build it up to be that high because then the trash can will sit just about there. But we are super close to finishing this build. It is finally complete. So on this side, I did the grass and stuff because I thought it looked cool. But on the other side, I left it blank without the grass. But now the volcano exterior is actually complete. Next thing we've got to start working on to integrate in at this level is the mechanism. I'm not actually sure how we're going to make this thing erupt, but I have a couple ideas of what we could do. I'm pretty sure I haven't done this in like 10 years. <laughs> you need vinegar and then you're going to get some baking soda. And what you're going to do is you're going to take the vinegar and pour it. And then you grab your food dye. And we're creating here what's called an endothermic reaction, which actually means it's going to be cold, not hot, because that's an exothermic reaction. I wanna test to make sure it doesn't dye the bricks. Now we have our baking soda in this test tube, and what we do is we just pour it into the vinegar. And there, our volcano erupts. 
We might have to get the measurements right, but that's one option. For my second idea for a reaction, we could actually make elephant's toothpaste. This one gets hot, quite close to the melting point of Lego. So don't do this at home. So first we're gonna add hydrogen peroxide and I'm using 3% here because it'll give less of a reaction. And then we're gonna put some dish soap in with the hydrogen peroxide. And a little bit of dye. I know how science works, guys. <laughs> Well, this is fantastic. Um, we might need to try this again with 6%. It's not as fast. It's still reacting. I forgot the soap. Ooh, it's going slower this time. Why is it going so slow this time? I don't think this is the stuff. <laughs> I do have another reaction we can test though. Okay, so for this next reaction, we're gonna do soda and Mentos. So we got two bottles of soda and we'll pour them into this thing. And now, all we gotta do is take our Mentos and pour them in, see what happens. Hey, that's not bad. Oh, that's not bad at all. Pretty short though. I mean, it worked, it just didn't work super good. It's kind of done now, it's just kind of bubbling. So after comparing all the options for the chemical reactions we could use, I think I'm gonna go with baking soda and vinegar for a few reasons. One, it's not sticky. And two, it seems to be like the largest reaction because we can do it at such a large scale. And three, it won't melt the Lego bricks, which is really important because I actually want to keep them. <laughs> I just need to figure out a mechanism that'll actually help us release baking soda into the vinegar. And I did have an idea for that where we take a balloon and we just fill it up with baking soda and then we tie it to the bottom of the can or something. And all we need is just to poke it with a sharp object. First, we need to figure out a way to get the baking soda inside a balloon. And I have a good idea. So my ingenious idea is to take a bottle, put this inside the bottle and expand it so we can actually have space to pour it in. Step one, we drill a hole in our bottle to let the air out. Step two, we get our Lego pneumatics. And we're gonna put an output hose here so it'll actually suck the air out of the bottle. So basically we're creating a vacuum chamber. It's working, we just need a better balloon. See now it's pushing the air out, you can hear it. Why do they keep popping? Just a little more. You can see it's still expanding, so it's blowing that out. And now, if we seal this off, we should technically be able to take this off here. Ah, darn it. Darn it. Okay, let's try again. It's working now. Finally. Here we go. Yes! Dude, now we have a balloon in a bottle. Oh, thank God. All right, there's five cups, so now. Nice. This is gonna go under the vinegar, and because it's so heavy, it'll sink to the bottom, and all we gotta do is get a sharp thing. So I just built up a simple little Technic stick and then taped a pin to it so we can see if it'll work. And then all we gotta do is get our needle, and... Hey! I mean, not great distribution, but with all the foaming and stuff, I think this should work for a release method. Now we just need to attach the mechanism up here. My plan is to just take the balloon. We basically just want an arm that goes like this inside there and then just kicks over, pop the balloon, and the two ingredients will be mixed together. So we got this up and running. All we gotta do is pull the pin here, and this thing will pop the balloon. It looks a little weak, but all it literally needs is a tap from the thumbtack or whatever, and this thing will be done. Now to assemble it, and finally, make the volcano erupt. <laughs> we gotta assemble a city outside though. All right, so as you can see, we have the city set up around the volcano. We have it all ready to go, but now we need to actually fill up the volcano with vinegar. So I have four gallons of vinegar here, and I'm going to put this dye inside of each one of them so we can pour them into the volcano. And I'm also gonna add just a little bit of soap because that'll help it foam up and actually look like lava. You see, there's a lot of buildings from the old city that didn't get quite destroyed. So I just laid them around here, put out some roads, and we have mini figures and cars and stuff, and even a hot dog stand that's set up right in front of the volcano for some reason. Probably not the brightest idea. So now we just have to pour all the vinegar in here. We already have it all set up on the inside. We just need to not break anything to put the balloon in there. And I'm a little scared to do that. So I guess pour the vinegar first. Here goes nothing. <laughs> a lot of vinegar. <laughs> we had a little squirt of soap. We should be good to go. So now that we got our soap and everything and all the vinegar in there, last thing we gotta do is put this baking soda thing in and get eye protection. <laughs> if this goes off, I mean, it's all ready, so. It should sink to the bottom. Yes. Okay. Oh, there's a nerve wreck. Here we go. We grab our pin and in three, two, one. 
I don't think it popped. <laughs> Let's just die. There we go. There it goes. Yo, dude, check that out. Oh my gosh, that's so sick. Yo, look at that. Just goners. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. Look at this. Wow, I did not expect it to be that much. Oh my gosh. Yo. That is literally so cool, oh my gosh. I did not expect it to do that good at all. That is like, <laughs> that surpassed my expectations like 200%. Dude, check it out, just went throughout the entire city. And it's still erupting. We put like the perfect amount of soap. Look at, look at him, <laughs> he's like ah. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. Well guys, we built a working Lego volcano and destroyed a Lego city. Check out one of these two videos because I think you'll enjoy them. And I'll talk to you in the next Brick Science. Time to clean up. <laughs> this will be fun.